be sure to go to flipsidegaming.com and use promo code six for 10 percent off on orders over ten dollars it's a good deal it helps the show and uh, currently they have a pre-order set for m21 also go to the grizzly gentleman and use the same promo code for 10 percent off at checkout both these are good deals and help support the show what's up planeswalkers theric six back with some more magic spoilers for corset 2021 and we're starting off with a, a zesty spicy meatball uh vryn wingmer first of all downshifted from rare reasonable uh it is technically it's not a new thalia this is uh glow rider i think is the og version of this card except it didn't have flying yes so this is this is legit glow rider but better uh <laughs> I mean, I guess it's not a, a cleric, which matters in some uh, instances, but not really. Uh, it's a good old-fashioned three mana, two one flying non-creature spells cost one more to cast. This uh, goes really nicely in historic death and taxes. I literally, go uh, turn two Thalia into turn three this, and then non-creature spells cost two more to cast. <laughs> Bite me, control decks. Um, obviously, I'm going to try this out in historic death and taxes, as I said before. Um, uh, probably. A week or so after Jumpstart releases onto Arena, uh, I'm going to do a new write-up for uh, Historic Death and Taxes, covering uh, mono, mono White uh, and then all of the two-color combinations. I might talk a little bit about the three-color combinations now that I've been able to play a little bit with them. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to be something very large. I'm not sure I'm going to do the... The first Historic uh, Primer I did for Death and Taxes was on the uh, Spike subreddit, and while it got fantastic reception, um, I don't know if Reddit has enough words for the amount I want to write about. Um, I am very passionate about Death and Taxes, and since I seem to be the connoisseur of Death and Taxes in Historic, um, I'm going to try to play a ton uh, once Jumpstart comes out and, and have sections on, um, you know, sideboard guides, matchup guides, um, trying to get some statistics in there as well. But uh, yeah, I, I plan on this being like the go-to primer for Historic uh, Death and Taxes. Next up, we have Garrick's Harbinger. This is a one dub green, uh, four three beast with hexproof from black. I do really like that they are uh, okay with printing more of this hexproof from uh, single instances. We saw this with the knights from I want to say Dominaria. Uh, you know, hexproof from white, hexproof from black. Uh, I think it's a very interesting way to not necessarily uh, have so much protection uh, because you know protection is one relatively confusing to newer players. Um, Although, you just have to remember a good old-fashioned uh, acronym thing. Um, but also, like, it it is more annoying um, in certain decks. So, for example, this is Hexproof from Black. You can still black it with a, a black creature. So, mono black decks aren't going to have nearly as a, a annoying of a time. So, uh, while I still think there is a, a place for protection to be, you know, used in Magic, uh, I, I do appreciate the fact that we, we are going to likely see more of this Hexproof from Blank. Um kind of working alongside protection to make it so that you can have cards that hate on other colors without necessarily, excuse me, having monocolor versions of those decks just be powerless to stop the nonsense. What does this card do besides that? Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, uh, look at the... Uh, look at that many cards from the top of your library. You may reveal a creature card or a Garrick Planeswalker card from among them and put, them, uh, put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So... This seems pretty decent. It doesn't have Trample. Um, however, with the 4-mana Garrick, it gives Trample on its plus 1. So this actually seems pretty reasonable uh, with that card. You know, you, you turn 3 this, turn 4 that Garrick, plus onto this, it becomes a 7-6 Hexproof from Black uh, and Trample. Uh, and then, you know, you, you do damage to a player or Planeswalker, which I do like that this uh, includes, so you can not worry too much about getting the value versus being able to destroy a uh, your uh, opposing uh, your opponent's planeswalker uh it's cool that you can get any garrick planeswalker that's that's nice we have a uh, another garrick right now the huntsman i don't remember the, the six drop one from throne of eldraine uh he has wolves that care about garricks in general so we might see an interesting green black like garrick style tribal-esque deck um that just it, it's not it's not Garrick Tribal, it just has nice Garrick synergies. Uh, so we can see that, and uh, you know, it's good old fashioned, it's, it's, you look at the top for the, the amount of damage you deal. So if you have ways to buff this, like the aforementioned 4-mana Garrick, uh, you can look real deep, and just having um, this kind of card selection on green is pretty cool. You might be like, but Theorix, you were talking the other day about card draw. There, there's a slight difference, like this is giving you another card, but it's not drawing cards, which is like weird. I don't know why the difference matters, but it does to me. Anyway. 
Subira. Tools CD. Caravaneer. <laughs> um, so it looks like with this being like a Teferi set, we have a bunch of different players from the uh, Mirage conflict. Um, so that was about Jumura, I think. Uh, the, that was like a continent on Dominaria. I think Zalfir was a part of Jamura. Uh, but whatever. A bunch of a bunch of people, you know, killing each other and stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's that's why we're getting some of these uh, specific characters. And I gotta say, I love the art. Absolutely lovely. Uh, I love her. I love her banner. She has a whip. Always cool when you see characters like actually use a whip as a weapon. Um, I really like her outfit as well. Uh, I <laughs> when I'm cold, I'll I'll just like put essentially sheets. <laughs> On myself and I kind of have it like that except longer obviously um, but yeah no really really cool art uh, camels and elephant I don't care about but the, the actual character she looks dope uh, anyway she's a three minute two three with haste cool she's a human shaman I don't really get that from the art but all right um, another pay one another target creature with power to her less can't be blocked unfortunately she can't make herself unblockable uh, I don't know if that was necessary whatever Two and tap, discard your hand until end of turn whenever a creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So, it's an interesting ability. I don't think, no, I, I don't see her, I mean, maybe you can get something interesting going on in Brawl, but I don't, I don't, see, I don't see the power here. Garden Spider, hell yeah, dude. Uh, three mana, one four. Reach Hexproof from Blue. Cool. Cool. We have a Hexproof from Black and a Hexproof from Blue. Uh, whenever Garden Spider is dealt damage, you gain one life and create a one one Sapling Creature Token. It's got a little fungus on his back. Wait, wait, wait. I, I just... <laughs> saplings. I, I guess they're not technically plants. Saplings are like. They're not saplings, right? Like, they are technically, I think, like Magic Original. I was gonna have, I was gonna be like, saplings don't make sense coming out of fungus, and like, eh, I, I, sure, it's made up, whatever. Um, I, I do like this card. I wish you gained a little bit more life, but. I, this card is meant to address a problem that unfortunately it doesn't address, because the blue decks, they, I, I wish this didn't have Hexproof from blue, I wish it said couldn't be countered. Um, you know, this this potentially would help a lot against uh, flying decks, you know, the, the blue-white Azure Skies, uh, but also it would help against flash decks somewhat. It, it's a, it's meant to, kind of those, those temple-style decks. Having Hesper from blue doesn't matter all that much. Obviously, like, you have access, like, there are unsummoned and brazen borrowers and things, but typically, uh, this is just not gonna, this is not gonna enter the battlefield. Uh, I could be super wrong, but this feels like a rare that is just not going to do enough uh, where, where, what it's uh, supposed to do. Hangry Sabertooth, 4-mana, uh, 3-3. Three, three. It's a cat at the beginning of your end step. If a creature died this turn, so morbid. Uh, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Hangry Sabertooth and untap it. Pretty cool. Uh, you can keep uh, attacking with this and some other dorkly dudes. Uh, your dorkly dudes died. This essentially gets pseudo vigilance. It gets bigger. Uh, after one activation of this effect, you get that uh, that red green archetype for draft, where you have a four power creature. Um, Stap. So that that is tap, I guess. And this, I believe. So I, I got a I got a comment. Um. Oh, I'm dumb, aren't I? I forgot the language. <laughs> I forgot the language was like right here. So I guess this is Italian. Yeah, this must be Italian. It's, it's it. Well, I feel stupid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I guess this is Italian for tap, for the the keyword tap anyway, because it doesn't make sense what else this would be. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a limited card. Celestial Enforcer is a Spanish card, because you can see the SP right at the bottom. Uh, three mana, two, three. Human Cleric. Great art. I wonder where she's from, though. Um, tap, pay two mana. Tap target creature. Active this ability only if you control a creature with flying. Why is this so bad? Uh, we've had tappers in the recent past. Like, like, the tappers have just been getting worse and worse. I don't know why. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, like, I guess by itself it was a 3 mana 2-3, but still, though. Like, you have to have a flyer. It, it makes sense in the dra draft archetype of blue-white skies, right? You have a flyer, you have a creature on the ground. If they, if, you know, they don't have any flyers, you can just go ahead and attack them freely. Um, and then at the, uh, during their turn, you tap down their biggest creature so they can't hit you with it. If they do have a flyer, you can proactively tap this so that you can get through uh, with your flyer. But still, uh, seems a little bit too good there. Or too good, too much there. Thieves Guild Enforcer. Once again, great art. <laughs> it looks so pretty, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the dreaded keyword. A uh, single black for a 1-1 human rogue with flesh. Uh, whenever Thieves Guild Enforcer or another rogue enters the battlefield under control, each opponent mills two cards. Okay, that's not that's not too bad. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in the graveyard, Thieves Guild Enforcer gets plus two plus one and has Death Touch. So, I mean, this could be a one mana three two with Death Touch and Flash. Or another rogue is eight. Hmm. I know that there are a decent number of rogues that have Flash. We have um, Brazen Borrower, I know is a rogue. The uh, two mana Ikoria, the the blue black flash card, uh, she's also a rogue. Um, yeah, I feel like this might just find its way into flash, even as like a, a two of or something, uh, just because it's something to do relatively early, and you get to kill things. Are there other rogues in that? I don't remember what spectral dude is. I think he's a pirate. I think he's a, a spirit pirate. But still, uh, oh, this is another one. This is the second person who's an, uh, an amputee uh, in Corset. Now, I think this is important enough to, to highlight, actually. Um, oh, I think... I think... No, I don't know. I unfortunately don't know whether or not uh, this is the case. Uh, sh you don't see anything. What? You, you don't see You don't see anything except, uh, except uh, this card that I'm scrolling down towards. Here we go. Uh, Tempered Veteran. Do I have this up here? Oh, I do. Awkward shut up. I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she she's um she's she has a a prosthetic. Interesting. It's just there. That's cool. Uh, this is the type of inclusion I like to see. It's like it, it's just there. It's like normal. She's just she's a she's a rogue who isn't defined by the fact that she has a robot arm. And she seems like she's still good at her damn job. Uh, <laughs> considering the blood. Conclave Mentor is a it is I think the uh, the archetype uh, poster uh, for the green white plus one plus one counters thing. Uh, so green white for a two two centaur cleric. If one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature you control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead. When Conclave Mentor dies, gain life equal to its power. So this this card is pretty nice because you can either make itself very large and gain life or you can just make another creature large, and you happen to get this bear that dies and gives you two. Uh, this this is pretty solid value. Now, uh, people have been comparing it to Winding Constrictor. Uh, Winding Constrictor is also an uncommon. However, this also includes artifacts, and it's not just plus one, plus one counters. So, and it also includes, like, you getting one, one counters, or getting counters, but, man. So, they're, they're similar, but different. For what it's worth, I do think this card does what it should do. Uh, I am upset by one thing uh why wasn't this called centaur mentor it's it's centaur mentor centaur mentor uh tempered veteran this is another art that i realized today like randomly not when i was looking at uh each of the cards individually but i just i just noticed it uh this character also they have a prosthetic leg cool two mana one two human knight uh, pay one and tap, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature with a 1-1 one, one counter already on it. Uh, or, four white, white, and tap, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. So, this is one of those cards that can help you get started in the draft archetype. Obviously, the fact that it's a 2-mana 1-2 is a little bit... Mm, but, once this gets going, you can really make one of your creatures quite large. I mean, this, in conjunction with Conclave Mentor, uh, it can get very out of hand very quickly. But, I'm not good and limited, so I don't know. The art on this card is really good. Uh, Wildwood Scourge is X and green for a 0 0 Hydra. Enter the battlefield with it, it, Hydra. Uh, whenever one or more 1 1 counters are put on another non Hydra creature you control, put a 1 1 counter on Wildwood Scourge. I understand why they have to say non Hydra creature. Because if you have Wildwood Scourge, 
and another Wildwood Scourge, and then you cast a Hydra, then that enters the battlefield with those 1-1 counters. Because of the way the rules work, those those counters are being put onto that Hydra. And then each of those Hydras trigger, the both of the Scourges. One of the, the triggers resolves, and it gets more counters put on it. That first Hydra now has another trigger. It triggers, and they keep triggering. So it has to happen like this, or else the game is, like, dumb. Because <laughs> you can very quickly just do, like, Wildwood Scourge for one, or, yeah, for X equals one. Wildwood Scourge X equals one. And then do that one more time. Bada bing, bada boom, you have a board of essentially infinitely large creatures if this was a May. It's not a May, which means the game would just end in a draw. But still. Um, this, once again, uh, works very nicely with the Conclave Mentor. Uh, you know, Mentor is going to put two counters on that creature, so Wildwood Scourge would get uh, even more, essentially. So, Conclave Mentor, you know, if one or more counters would be put on a creature, put that many plus one. So, let's say I'm using a uh, Tempered Veteran to put, and let's keep it with just these three. Uh, I put, I already have a counter on my Conclave Mentor. I'm going to put one additional counter on my Mentor, right? Um, so, that would become two. Right. So, I'm now putting two onto that. The Wildwood Scourge would get three counters, because the Conclave Mentor got two on it, which means we're going to put... Oh, it's not that many? Alright, never mind. I thought this said that many. Alright, well, it's still, it's still good. It's still going to get two. <sighs> I'm sad. Truffle Snout, the happiest looking boar in all of Magic. Truffle Snout, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two boar. When it enters the battlefield, choose one, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, or you gain 4 life. You can either have a 3 mana, 3-3, three, three. was that a hail giant? Grey Ogre, it's a Grey Ogre. No, Grey Ogre's, Grey Ogre's a 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, isn't it? Hail Giant's a 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, this is better than Grey Ogre. Um, or, you gain life. What's not to love? It's a, it's a good, it's a good common. Alias V, spoiler card, Feline Sovereign. 3 mana for a 2-3. Other cats you control get plus 1, plus 1, and have protection from dogs. Where's the where's the Canaan Sovereign, huh? Where's the other dogs you control get plus 1, plus 1, and have protection from cats, huh? Hmm? Nonsense. Canid Unification. Uh, whenever one or more cats you control deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or creature that player... Uh, artifact or enchantment. Uh, that player controls. I do like the 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 flavor behind this card. Uh, cats are known for their wanton destruction of property. They just knock shit down. It, it, it's funny. I think it makes sense. Um, dogs beg. Cats lay claim. Uh, no. Uh, dogs respect you as family. Uh, cats are assholes. <laughs> my, cat's, my cat's fine, though. She, she's okay. Uh, th th this, this card, thematically, it makes a lot of sense, though. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Gourmands. My man's horns look a little too much like grizzled brains. Uh, but Igor, once again, does a fantastic job. This thing is just gross looking in, in all the right ways. Uh, it's a 6 mana, 5-5 five, five demon as additional cost to sacrifice, uh, as additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice a creature. Flying, trample, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifice a creature. Uh, it's good limited. Uh, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five flyer, that you get rid of your, your weakest creature um, and force your opponent to, to get rid of theirs, to be honest, but still. It, it should it should be decent. Miscast. A single blue instant. Counter target instant or sorcerer spell. Unless it's controller pays three. I fear this card. It only hits instant sorceries. But I fear this card. I can't I can't point to any anything specific, any specific interactions, any specific decks. But it feels wrong. Enthralling cold. Hilarious. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, five mana for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. You can't choose an untapped creature as this spell's target as you cast it. What this means is you you can't choose an untapped uh, an untapped creature. You have to get a tapped creature. Now some people might be saying why doesn't this say just uh, enchant target on uh, target tapped creature because as soon as that creature becomes untapped the creature will no longer be a, a legal 
attachment. I don't know the exact terms. I don't know if it's still counted as target, but it will no longer be a legal attachment because the uh, the state of the creature has changed such that I can no longer be uh, enchanting an untapped creature because it's now tapped. So, um, or it's now untapped. You control an enchanted creature. Uh, this is very interesting. Um, did we get a... We, no, we don't have a reprint of control magic. What, what, what was control magic in? Okay, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I thought we had a reprint of control magic at some point. Uh, I guess it was commander or something. Um, this card is not going to see any play. <laughs> Uh, I respect that they kind of tried to lower the power level. I, mean, I, I should I shouldn't say that. This is probably still pretty decent in uh, in limited because you just you take their best thing. It just means that you have to get hit with it or have them get tapped down. For example, by one of one of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. Uh, cool. This is the Liliana Swamp. This is this looks like Dakmore. And I don't know if Dakmore was near House Vest. I thought House Vest was near... What? No, it wasn't, it wasn't near Urborg. So I guess House Vest was near Dakmore. Um, there are only so many swamps on Dominaria. They're, they're a huge-ass plane. Uh, but yeah, uh, we, we've known for a while that Dominaria is only on House Home Plane. Uh, it's a bit strange that we didn't get House Vest. Or, like, uh, the, ma like the manor. Like, this looks like a strange just random part of Dakmore, but still. Um, I will say, I love this treatment. It has, like, the, um, the, like, neck part of Liliana. You know what I'm talking about. Liliana's steward. Right, he, lo he looks like... He looks like me if I died and lost the beard. Uh, one mana, one, two, zombie. Tap it, sacrifice it. Uh, target opponent, discard a card, activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. Uh... Meh. Yeah, just a lot of meh. I can't... I can't really see this being played, like, anywhere. Nah. That's awkward. Uh, Rambunctious Mutt is a 5-mana 3-4. Adorable. Very large boy. Ram uh, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment in opponent controls. Is it what dogs get? We don't, we don't get the cyber. We get a, a mutt. Okay, wizards. Okay. Lilna's devotee. Uh, three mana, two, three. Human warlock. Zombie to control. Get plus one, plus oh. At the beginning of your end step. I, I'm, I'm going to pause. Why are you a human? <laughs> Why are you a fucking human? I, I really hate when wizards prints tribal support on things that aren't a part of the tribe. Uh, I think they did a little bit of that with, uh, I mean, obviously they did a little bit of that with Ixalan, uh, the dinosaurs at the very least. Uh, we had some dinosaur support there, but some of that I, I guess was fine um, because it would feel weird to put um, like Otepic Huntmaster or whatever. Um, it would it'd be, it feel weird to put those abilities onto a dinosaur. Um, same with like Kinjali's Herald or Steward or whatever it was. Um, I I want to say they did a little bit of that for the vampires as well. I want to say there were a couple of humans who cared about uh, vampires. For what it's worth, I, I dislike that as well. But like, this could have been a zombie. <laughs> and maybe they did it for like power level reasons. But I I don't I don't see how that's the case. Um, I, why <laughs> why is this a human? Stop! Give me a zombie warlock or something. I don't fucking know. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, you may... Uh, sorry. If a creature die this turn, you may pay one in a black. If you do, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. I, I love the ability. I really do. I think this ability is really fantastic. Um, it, I mean, it makes sense for someone who's working with Liliana or working in her shadow or something, whatever. But this still could have been a fucking zombie. We've seen time and time again that zombies themselves can reanimate things. Come on! It, it it's so like the ability, the stat line and the abilities are so good. It's just on a human. Like you could be saying, but but then it would get the buff. No, just say other zombies you control get plus one plus zero. Oh. This could still be a three mana two three. We've had zombies that have better 
uh, buff abilities than this. We, we've had a uh, fucking... Uh, uh, the, the, a cursed something? I don't remember the damn dude's name, but from Amonkhet. Like, why? <laughs> it's not even a creature that you have to control. You can just, if something died, make a zombie. But it's on a human. <laughs> it's on a human. Why? <laughs> oh, I'm so upset. I'm sad. Liliana's standard bearer, at least is a zombie. It's a zombie knight. We've seen a decent amount of zombie knights recently. Uh, I wonder if there's enough to make specifically zombie knight tribal. Uh, but it's a three mana flash, three one. When it enters the battlefield, draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. This one does only count your creatures, which is fair. But what I really like about this is this is anti-board wipe tech. Um, and we've seen uh, for a while, like zombies are the most resistant uh, to board wipes. I think that's still the case. Uh, I could be wrong. But essentially, you hold this in your hands and you hold up a, you know, Murder Rider, let's say. It's literally the same cost. Um, if your opponent plays a Planeswalker you want to kill, other than Teferi, obviously. Uh, Teferi stops this from being cast as well just because Flash. I hate Teferi so much. Um, if if you if they play a creature Planeswalker, you kill it with Murder Rider. If not, and they board wipe you, or even just like kill two of your creatures, or even, frankly, one of your creatures, you get to replace that immediately. And it doesn't, this doesn't cost you a lot, uh, any life. It, it, it just draws you the cards, right? Uh, this is really, really interesting, uh, in my, uh, oh, gosh. I don't know if I'll even be able to play a normal 60 card zombies list once we get Amonkhet back, because there are going to be too many damn playables. So I'm just gonna be playing, oh, oh, I can't wait for zombie brawl, dude. Oh. I mean, I'm going to make a zombie brawl as soon as M21 is released because we do have uh, some some nice new zombies. Plus, we have new Lilianos. It's going to be historic brawl, so I can get uh, the zombies from what the the Dominaria zombies, uh, like Joseph Vess and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, th I mean, yeah, uh, this this seems good. I would, I was going to say like I would play this in combination with Midnight Reaper, but then like there's also the I can't remember the damn card's name. I can see the art. Whatever. Uh, but the, the zombie lord from... Um, from Amaket. And then you also have the uh, Death Baron. So I don't even know, like... I don't even know how... You would be able to fit the cards in there. I don't know. I, I like the card, though. Defiant Shrek is back uh, in M21. Sure. I just wanted people to know. Same with Ranger's Guile. Uh, Ranger's Guile last seen in uh, Magic 2015, technically. Uh, good old green instant. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains hexproof until end of turn. Um, I wonder if this replaces anything in Naya Feather in Historic. I, I don't know. I don't really play the deck or see it very often. But, I mean, it, it definitely has some sort of uh, contention because it also gives... Plus one, plus one. I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know. And Duress is back. We, uh, we have Duress from, uh, 2020. But it looks like we're going to have Duress for a little bit longer. Which, frankly, is nice. When we can just say, oh man, there's a, there's a three-minute Teferi in there? Nah. That's it, though. Uh, I mean, technically, I, I probably should have ended with Vryn, Vryn Wingmare, because uh, it's the thing that I'm probably most excited about in these. Is that true? Is that is that really true? I want the, I I want to love this card. You don't understand. I want to love this card, but it isn't a zombie. <laughs> why, wizard? Why? Like, how annoyed would people be if freaking um? If Merfolk Mistbinder weren't a Merfolk, like how annoyed would you be if it was uh, like a construct? Let's say it was a blue-green construct that it was one of like those jade, those jade statues that the Merfolks uh, on Ixlan made, and it was it was literally blue-green artifact creature, two-two construct Merfolk creatures you control get plus one, uh, plus one, plus one. It would be infuriating, wouldn't it? Why then? Do we accept this for zombies? Stop. Get some help. That human. Come on. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank my lovely patrons for the continued support. I have a new patron, but they're not responding to my messages, so... 
I can't put them on the end screen if I don't know what they want me to call them. Uh, so that's a little awkward. Uh, anyway, uh, if you'd like to join the, the patrons in supporting the show, you'll find links in the description. Uh, I, of course, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, go and tap that like button, add subscription to your mana pool, uh, put your comment in the comment section uh, about uh, how angry you are about the fact that Liliana's devotee is a fucking human and not a goddamn zombie. Um, yeah, until next time, though, I will be one. I have not lost insane. What?